Hello and welcome to another class time session. Kame and I are excited to delve yet again into the language of the universe. You're referring to math, right? Of course I am. Okay, just wanted to make sure. So our topic for today is problem solving in number theory and computation. Let's get right to it. I agree. So let's take a look at our objectives for today. All right. Understanding problem solving, problem solving strategies, and using problem solving strategies in computation and number theory. Hmm. Hmm. Let's look at this scenario. All right. Junior wants to start a backyard chicken coop farm. He has $1,252.50. He needs to buy <coughs> trays, and each tray costs $50. It costs $752.50 for a taxi to take the trays to his farm. How many trays can Junior buy? Guess what, Tamika? Mm. Junior have a problem. Well... At least he may have some money, so let's see. If but him can... still have a problem because he has money, yes. Needs the trays because without the trays, the farm not going to work. So he has to figure out what is, we need to figure out how many trays he can buy. But in figuring, in figuring out how many trays he can buy, don't we need to know some things? Well, um, they told us the cost of the tray. I know how much, how much money he has. That's all I need to know. No, man, but I think, you know, we know he has a problem. We need to understand what the problem is. Well, so in understanding what the problem is here, you would have rightly said he has some money. He has some money. So we know he, he has how some much money. To buy, how much Great. to pay for each tree. Right. So he has some money. Mm -hmm. He needs to buy some trees. And guess what? He knows how much or he knows the cost of each tree. Most definitely. He, what else he knows? Look again at the scenario, well, man. You what said I need to understand. There is another figure in there that I probably, all right, it costs $752.50 for a taxi to, oh, he needs to get the trees to the farm. Good. So that has to be, that's a part of understanding his problem. Okay, so he has to make sure that he pays attention to all the information that he needs to in order to buy these trays. So after he would have understood his problem, he then he would have just he, listed he us. He needs to start planning how he's going to get his trays. So he needs to figure it yeah, out, don't he? he needs to make a plan to figure out how he's going to start the coop by getting these trays. So he needs to buy the trays and get them to the farm. All so right. he has to make a plan in order to figure this out. And when he makes the plan, guess, guess what is going to happen now? What will take place? So he it, understands it, that him have a problem plan, in plan it then. You can not? work out this plan and end up with a solution, man. Good, so I'm going to solve the problem. Of course, because after your plan, you can solve. Great, and in him solving the problem, when he now knows that he <clears> needs so much trays or to purchase. Can afford so much trays. Right, cause... based on how much money he has. Right. Right. So based on how many trays he would have now ended up with, he would have realized, all right, hmm, as you rightly said, I can afford it, I can't exactly. afford it. But so hmm. if, he, if he plans well, he can see the money that he, he will realize that the money he has can pay for X amount of trays and also the transportation costs because he has to pay that taxi. So with understanding his problem, planning how he's going to use his money, planning how to solve his problem, he can come up with a viable solution, and then at the end, before he even executes everything or after, he figure out the solution. He can definitely check if everything works out. If everything works yeah. out. You, what do you think we really looked at here? Because we, we started out with Junior having a what again? He had a problem. Great. So he, he had a problem. He wanted that chicken coop, and he had X amount of money. He had All a specific right. amount of money to get some trees. Right, so we're just going to put it now in writing. Mm. So here, we know that we're looking at problem solving and we would have oh, spoken yes. about a process that entails in junior having the problem and such. So here goes. So the problem solving process is a set of steps that are sufficiently general, sufficiently general, so that they can be applied to 
any problem in order to obtain a solution. So before you even move on, when you say sufficiently general, what do you mean? I can apply this not only to Juno's problem, but to any other problem I have. Right. No, no, you're thinking. Okay. So to any other problem, because guess what? A problem is a problem. Got you. So in figuring out that problem, there's a process that takes place in really solving that problem. Well, that makes sense. Yes, and we would have spoken about the process, we but we're just formalizing it because <laughs> one, we, rem we realized that we had to understand of the problem course, first. We had to look at all the information that was given. Great. Uh -huh. And in understanding the problem, we had to devise a plan. We plan out something. We come up with some way to figure out how to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. So we made a plan. Great. And then what else we did? You implement the plan, man. Good. And in implementing the plan, we know we have to solve it, don't right. it? Right. We find a solution. Well, Any way you want to term it. Right. And then guess what? We can now check to, to ensure see. that that plan that we came up with and we implemented that plan, that it does work. Because guess what happens? Sometimes the plan don't work, you know? Mm -mm. So you really have to go back and check and look back where you made that error and make a new plan. All right. So since we would have spoken about Junior with his problem, we're we now Junior. going to take a look at everything. So we looked <clears throat> at the factors that right. he had. We know he had $1,252.50 to buy the trays. What else we knew? Each trays cost $50. Great. What else? That this little cost here, he definitely can't take the trays on his back. He needs a taxi which costs $752.50. Great, so we have all of these factors that we know. So we know these factors from the problem. So what you're saying, in knowing these, we now understand Juna's problem. We need, before saying that we definitely understand, so we know what he has, but mm -hmm. guess what? We need now to finalize that we understand the problem. <clears throat> yeah. We need now to figure out what he needs, which we said already. Right. He needs to figure out how many trees. Right. So, right. So we need to know what we are working towards. What is the problem that we have? Nice. So in understanding the problem, we need to look at the factors that we have. And we also need to know what we need to find out. Right. What so is that's required. in the Yes. That's in the understanding process. All right. And we would have spoken about our plan. After you understand, you can definitely plan. You know what I'm thinking, though, about with the plan? Mm -hmm. The plan that I'm thinking, because if we know how much money he has, right. we know that he needs some trays. We know that each tray costs $50. We also know he needs transportation, and there is money allotted for transportation. Mm -hmm. In this plan, I think maybe in solving it, we can maybe work it backward. All right. So, all right. So you're going to... Solve this by working backward. You can work backward to find the number of trays that can be bought. Yeah, man, that's what mm. I'm going to do. I'm going to work it backwards. I'm going to use what we have. I right, make we discuss and see how that works then, no? Yeah, man, we're going. I'm going to show you. So okay. Don't stress it, man. I'm going to show you. So look here now. So the first mm. thing that we're going to do, we're going to separate the cost of the taxi by subtracting the cost of transportation. Guess Makes what? Sense. From the money that he has. So he can't order taxi till another time? Not at all. Oh. So right here, we would have done this. So we know that he originally had $1,252.50. Right, right. We also know that the taxi is $752.50. So we would have subtracted to know how much money we're working with now. Fifth. So we have... $500 $500 in all. I thought Juno could buy a whole heap of trees. No, that's why we need to understand the problem and that's why we need to figure out how we're going to solve the problem and then we implement this plan that we have. So we know we have $500 working with now. Mm -hmm. So now we need to calculate how many trees can be purchased from the money left. Now, how would you calculate the cost of this. Tell well, me no. definitely. If you have $500 and you know each tray costs $50, it's simple, man. You divide 15 to 500 or you can go and add 50 till you get 500, whichever you want to do it. But All efficiently, right. I would divide 15 to 500. Great, because we were told that each tray cost $50. 50. Right. So in dividing my 500 by the $50, we know that how many tray Junior needs now? He can only purchase 10 trees. Great. Good job. 10 trees. I'm so sorry, kind of small, but all right. 10 trees. 
So what, what we realize happened? You realize I, I, I told you what, what's my plan? How we're going to figure out how many trays he yes. needed? You remember what I said you I said using? You said you're using the backward method. The backward way. Yes, I, I want to the... work it backwards. backwards. So I'm using work it what backwards. we know to try and figure out what, what we need what to we find need to out. Know. Right. All right. And now I'm going to check. So I All want right. to show you that our solution that we would have arrived at is correct. So here we have, how can you show that your answer is correct? We're going to check it. That's right, ma'am. And we're going, when checking it, we're going to know if our answer is reasonable as well. So let's take a look here. Okay. So we would have arrived at 10 trays. Mm -hmm. And we also know each tray, $50. So when you multiply the 10 trays that we got by the $50 for each tray, what did we get? $500. $500. And then let's look here now. So we know $500 for all the trays. Now and the 10 that. trays that he yep. needs. And, and tell me what this transportation cost would have been remember. $752.50. So when you add those two figures, you'd have gotten exactly what Juna started out with. $1,252.50. So you're right. Well, answer correct. Simple, simple something. So we solved the problem. We of solved Juna's not. problem. So now Juna can go to the farm store and buy him simple, 10 trays. Simple something. Just like that. Exactly. So in looking at this now, and remember I would have shared that I was working work. it backward, backwards. right? So now this is what is entailed in the working backward. Okay. So one, start with the end of a problem and work step by step, which is what we did, mm -hmm. toward the beginning to get a solution. Right. Two. Write down what you don't know and what you do know. Makes sense. Right. Three, write down each step as you get closer to the answer. Okay. And four, the last step, which we did, will verify that the solution works. And we saw that it works. Everything added up and we're good to go. Yeah, we, 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 we were okay. All right, so here we are. So what you said, planning, I mean... Problem solving. So when you are faced with a problem, we must first understand the problem. When we understand the problem, we may read the problem and maybe one, twice, identify the question or questions, circle what you know. That's understanding the problem. Then next, we plan. Choose a strategy that makes sense and works for you. Now that first strategy, it worked for us this time, but it may not always work. So it's always okay to make another plan. Then make an estimate. What do you think the answer may look like? Might be, yes. Right. Solve, try your strategy, show all your work, label and circle your answer. And then of course the last thing is to check. Explain and justify your answer. Decide if your answer is reasonable. And we pretty much did all of that. Come on, we did all that. And when we're thinking about all this that we have here, understand, plan, solve, check, we are again looking at the problem solving process. It, there you go. There's a process that we go through and we know we definitely have to understand the problem. So I want to know if you're paying attention. So guess what is going to happen now? I know you know, you're going to just give me something else to do. Yeah man, because I want to know how you're going to solve this problem. All right. So here's your problem. So Junior went to the supermarket. Joel, so jo Juna, oh yes, yeah, so was the farm. Yes, so Joel now went to the supermarket to purchase peanut butter for his mother. Okay. He saw two jars of peanut butter of the same brand. That's right. And there's your photo of the peanut butters, right? Mm -hmm. The brand this is, is what peanut I, butter. Right. This is what <laughs> I want you to tell me now. He wants to know which of the jars shown is the better buy. Ah. Well, I'll work this here again. All right. So <clears throat> we have the small jar there, which is 150 grams of peanut butter for $2.14. And we have a 400 gram jar for $6.50. All right. What is the better buy? All right. Um, he's going to have to figure out how much he's paying for a gram. Or him can figure out, him, him, can he ask himself how many of the small one can fit in the big one? Well, him can ask himself that question for real, you know, yes, but he when him go in the supermarket, him can go put the, the, each of the small ones, the 150 gram into the 400 gram He's going to jar. estimate. All right, so, so now you're talking. understand 
what the cost and the, the cost in relation to the, to, to the amount of peanut butter. No, 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 you're thinking, man, yeah. you're getting somewhere yeah, you good. You need to understand how much, you know, 150 to two. You can't do the Croatia thing, you know, 150 to $2.14 and 400 to $6.50 and see where I'm going with that. All right. So in what you are saying now then, that he understands that he's the same brand. is not yeah. that one brand is, um, you know, maybe... Tastes of better, a, yes, tastes sweeter. It's the same brand, but it's just that, hey... One costs two dollars fourteen. One, one costs cost six dollars fifty cents. Yeah. Right. But one bigger, so we don't sell. We don't just buy the bigger one. You don't just buy the bigger yeah. one. Uh -huh. mm. Well, that is what you just would do. But Junior want to figure out which one is the better buy. Which you, makes sense. Yes, it does make sense. So what you would have shared earlier about him trying to figure out how much for each gram. Right. In each of the peanut butter jars. We can try and take it from that angle. All right. So we would look at how much is it for each gram in jar A, how much it is for each gram in jar B. So let's take a look here because I had written it down. So let's look right. here. So in jar A, 150 gram we know of peanut butter costs the two dollars fourteen cents. So there. here we have it. Mm -hmm. Great. So we are now trying to figure out. What's the price for one grams? In the so, small jar. All hear right. me about one grams for one gram. One gram. So here we have it. So the cost now is zero point zero one four dollars, correct to three decimal places. That's right. the price for one of the gram in the one hundred fifty gram. Draw the jar. Cheap man. Wait no man, let's look again. Yeah, let's talk about the jar B now. Okay. Which was the 400 right, gram, which right? is a bigger jar. Great, right, so we're right. doing the same process now. We need to figure out what's How the price per gram. per gram of this one, okay. which is $0.016. Look at that. Correct, I thought I'd be three decimal deal. places. You think, so guess what? You're going to have to look closely now yes. to tell me now, because you would have shared all of this with Honestly, us. So look closely now to tell us which one would you work with, jar A or jar B? Well, jar A would definitely be the better buy. Great. Because and you're paying less per gram. Nice. Mm. Great. And we're seeing it here, too. Most that definitely. jar A, which was our $0.014, is definitely okay. less mm -hmm. than our $0.016. And if Joel thinks that the better means costing less than buying the peanut, then buying the peanut butter in jar A is definitely a better buy oh, than yes. buying the peanut butter in jar B. And guess what, too? Just like what you said, you would have bought more of the small one. Right, because if I bought three of the small jars, $2.14 for one. That is what, $6, um, for two, 12, that's 52? Somewhere along yeah. that line. It's still, I'd get 450 grams, which would still work out to be more weird. than the large jar, than oh, jar yes, B. Man. Jar B really tricked me this time. I thought, I thought jar B would be bigger. The money never looked too far off, but I have to really work this thing out. Yes, because bigger does not mean it is always the best and the buy or the better thing buy. necessarily Great. get me the right solution. So, so what so. did you use then? How you tried to figure out <clears throat> this solution? How? Well, it's really reasoning because I had to figure out that it's really logical reasoning because I had to look at... How am I going to compare these two jars of the same brand of peanut butter? I'm going to have to break it down and figure out how much one gram cost, which I really had to reason that out. So I would say a logical reason. And you're right you on spot. So it's logical reasoning. And this is an important tool in mathematics. Wherever problem solving is, it's an important tool but because it helps students to develop a deep appreciation for what they are doing. And guess what to logical reasoning consists of some sort. And in order for us to understand that problem, there had to be some reasoning there. Yes. Because just looking at the two jars of peanut butter would not give us sufficient information to understand and make any sort of plan. Mm -mm. Because so. we would readily run and buy the larger yeah. one to okay. say, oh yes, we're getting, oh yes, it's bigger enough, bigger. so we're getting the yeah. better buy. No, 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 we have to reason it out. And logical reasoning involves a lot of things. Yes, so. it does. Examining the problem to determine what information has been provided. Asking 
asking the right questions to determine what other information is needed. And last, using the information given as well as the answers obtained to make inferences and draw conclusions. So we logical would have reasoning. yes, logical reasoning. So we would have looked at working backwards mm -hmm. in one of our problems in Junior's problem. Right, Junior and that farm. Yes, and mm -hmm. now Joel have his supermarket problems right. and we reasoned for Jun for Joel's supermarket problem. Hmm. So we go on two strategies. Right. I hope so we, we're taking note, you know, we go on two strategies. But already. we did say you know, that problem solving doesn't mean that you have that one plan and see that you can try different ideas. Can different try. strategies. Right. Use the correct term. Different so, strategies can be applied. And we're still linking it to our process, so we have to understand the problem. Have definitely have a plan. You have a plan, great. And solve it. And then we check. That's right. So that's our problem solving process. So here we have another problem. All right. So apart from Joel going to the supermarket, here Rowan is going to the supermarket too. And he wants to purchase rice, mm -hmm. potatoes, and milk. He needed six and a half kilograms of rice costing $2.40 per kilogram. Right. $52.80 for four bags of potatoes mm -hmm. and $2.13 Per cart dollars per carton of milk. The supermarket had various combo packages, and we can attest to that. Yeah, the man, many times have them that. packages going on and the deals. But there was one which matched his selection. He spent a total of $92.40. The receipt was blurry. And he wanted to see all the details of the items he purchased. How could we help solve this problem now with the information given and mm -hmm. the blurry receipt? All right. So let me read it again because Good. I need to understand this problem. Good job. So re right there and then you can realize too that you don't necessarily have to read the problem one time right. and get it. Sometimes two, three, four times you have to read it. Right. So go again. So man. let me read. Ruan went to the supermarket. He purchased rice, potatoes and milk. He needed six and a half kilogram of rice costing $2.40 per kilogram. $52.80 for four bags of potatoes and $2.13 per carton of milk. All right, so right away, I know he bought three things, three different items. Um, yeah, and I know the cost of them-ish. Yes. All right, so his combo now, this combo thing. So he's, he know his total was $92.40. That's his total. Yes. That's so, all right. So, all right, I get information. All right, what is being asked again? How could, oh. Remember, his receipt was great. So, Good. the receipt was blurry. And he wanted to see all the details of the purchase. I'm assuming that he realized the receipt when he reached home. Come here, let and back for a printout. Thank you very much. Then that's where we need to pay attention all right. too. So, he got, he's at home now, and the receipt blurry. Okay. How could we solve this problem with the information given and the blurry receipt? It could be a case right. too, you know, where his wife said, no man, I need to say how you spend $92.40 and him can't explain, so him have a problem. Yeah. And he needs to fix the problem. So right. based on what you would have just done. Yes, so we understand you all the information good. that's given and what is required of us. We need to help Ruan figure out how he spent the money. And you would have highlighted, you see, just like what we told him earlier and understanding, even when you read it one, two, three, four times, yes. you can highlight, circle, At underline. Yes, sir. Because when you would have been reading it now, you would have been saying, oh, I know that he needed six and a half kilograms right. of so rice. Right, underline that right. with the money per kilogram. You underline look at the, the potatoes, potato. the milk, you know all of that. And then you would have also said to us, hey, Circle the total. The total. Off. And we look what the problem is because we need to know what we're trying to figure out. Right. We know what we have and we need to know what we are trying to. So we to. basically help him to replicate the receipt. Yes. We, we, okay. We're trying to help him to have the receipt then to be able to look at it to know exactly how much money he spent on okay. 
maybe each item, based on what we're going to be looking at too on each item, the total cost to for the item differently from the unit price as right. well. Right, so we want him to pretty much be able to see what's on the receipt. So, how are we going to do that? Yes, how well, are we, we, we going to We would love for our audience to work on this, right? Because this is important. I want them to get a chance to think about this before we even solve it here. Right, so we'll pause here to give way to a few messages. We'll be back in just a bit. We have it live days. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you. Standing, right, man, and we went through planning. it. We read the problem a second right. time. We understood all that he bought and what he paid per kilogram for each thing that he bought. Well, except for the milk, it's per carton. Yes, and the and potatoes is bags. All right. So we, we looked at the information that was given in the problem and how much the total that he had spent. All right. So we are now faced with helping him to pretty much put back that receipt together. together. So I think maybe we could put this information in a table, man. We can put it in a table. Yes, yes ma'am. All right, let's try and put the information that we have now in a table. Most definitely. So let's see what it would look like. All right. So we have the items, the quantity, the unit price, the total cost. Hold for information this one. No, but this is what we would have looked at with his well, problem. because he the bought. the would I really have on all of this. Yes, remember you know, he bought rice, yes. potatoes, milk. milk. And the quantity. Right, and you know we have to pay tax, so tax. Right, the tax, okay. the subtotal tax, the total, and we have our total costs on the other. Oh, so these are the things as well. in, these are the things in, he doesn't know these no. things. Mm -mm. Also we need to find W, X and Y. Yes, these are oh. the things that are missing and if him don't Figure this out, and if we can't help Rowan to figure you this might out, have to go back to the supermarket. Well, I am sorry for that <laughs> condition. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so where do we go? Okay, so for the rice, we definitely we have the quantity and we have the unit cost, so we can figure out the total cost for the rice, man. You're sure? Yeah, man, we can figure it out, man. Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 wait. How are we going to figure that out now? Listen, man, if you need six kilograms, six and a half. Even if I don't know how to multiply this, I could add $2.40 six times. What about the half? I would half it. I would half it and add it, and to, add it, it to it too. All right. Because it's half. So right. we can multiply so the quantity oh, there I can multiply. by the unit. Right. So we can do the repeated addition, yes. But we can go ahead then to do our six and a half multiplied by our $2.40. Much All yes. right. What about the potatoes? All right, so four bags of potato cost mm -hmm. $52.80. Simple sum that, man. We divide $52.80 by four. No, sir. What Just you know you told us that we're going to multiply the quantity oh. by the unit price. Yeah, but so you see now, how are you going to divide? Because I don't know how much for it, so I can't take it away from it. So I have to figure out how much one bag costs. Okay, so, so it's the four, four bags oh, cost so that. So I have to divide oh, it up into oh. four equal. Oh, I get it. I Pots. get it. So for the potatoes, I get it. I, I get it. just have to divide. And I can do this milk one. So yeah, watch yeah. me now for the milk one. Sure. Boom, man. I just multiply. So I just say, all right, my unit price is $2.35. Mm. My total cost is $14.10. So I just multiply and I get how much cartons in by, you know, that, just like that. Where are you going to multiply? What, what oh, are you going to multiply again? I'm looking what you're doing in you know, the first one. When you look at the rice, you multiply and then you go divide. So now I must multiply. You're not, you're not, all right, all right. Good attempt, but let's look at, let's look at the first column. The first, this is column, the first row. I have information in this um, column and this column. Look at yours. 
even the information layout is different. Oh. So I can't use that same method that I use for the first for oh, the first row. Okay, so for the milk we have how much he actually so spent. This is your total. Oh, and so this the is total for each to carton. Okay. So, so now that you shouldn't say, Mom. Oh, no, you, get, you, you have this, man. You have so, this. So wait there, wait there. So if I'm not, I can't multiply because I don't know the quantity and the quantity right. is what I need to know. But I know the unit price and I know the total cost. All right. I'm going to divide. I'm going to share it. I'm yeah, going man. to split it up then. That's correct. So if you divide your $14.10 by $2.35, you definitely will get how many cartons you would have bought. And we can help Rowan to figure out what W, which is the total cost of the rice, what X, which is the unit price of the potatoes, right. and what Y, which is how much cartons of milk he bought. So let's take a look because we had helped him. Of so course. Let's look what we did. So here. we multiplied $15.60. Great. So that would have been our total cost for our rice. All which, right. Which again is W. R correct. Right. And then here for our potatoes. We would divide $52.80 by 4, giving us $13.20. There you go. Great, which is X. And 6. So if you divide $2.35 into $14.10, you would get 6 cartons of milk. And ah. when Ruan looks at this... Him can stay home now. And him can add it up on him own and him yeah, can man, check can... it to see if everything Yes, I remember out. we spoke about checking there it. Go. Good. So right so here we have the figures. Two, right. It so adds up and see if all things come up to ninety go the rice. Forty cents. The potatoes. The milk. The milk. So and then of course add the tax. Right to the subtotal. Of course. To get the total. Most definitely. And he can check if him tax right to him can check if twelve percent of eighty two dollars fifty cents. Is nine dollars ninety cents to see. All right, it's really twelve percent tax right, I paid. So hmm. Joel wife, no need for sense. It's no. not Joel wife, man. This one is Rowan one. Oh jeez, Joel is peanut butter boy. Yes, these people man. Just them crossing crossing full of problem. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> Joel have crossing problem. Over. Joel have problem. I know Rowan have problem. Full of problem. Rowan problem solved. No, we help. Yeah, we are helping them yeah, to man. solve their problems. That's but what, what do you think we use to help Rowan to solve his problem? His blurry receipt problem now, because he had a problem. Yeah. And we help him solve the problem and we check it. We help him now to know how to check to see if I right, what you would have figured out if it's right. Well, when you know, when we first looked at the um the problem, when it was written out like that, it wasn't so easy to see how they are linked. But as soon as we dropped all that information in this table, it was so much easier to access the problem and, and solve. simpler to work it out, don't much it? Much better. Much simpler. better. So we made a table we did make and a sometimes table sometimes i guess we can make a list we can make a list and or we can also make a chart too but in this case we looked at creating our table that's right and when this method is used two key activities are usually involved mm -hmm. these are one exploring the results of simpler cases and recording the answers in a table two identifying a pattern from the table that can be extended over many or any number of cases. All right. So, so Excellent. far again, we're looking at Making problem solving strategies and we're looking at the process in understanding, planning, solving, checking. I'm hoping that they understand fully so by the time we finish. just to remind, for those who are just joining us or for those who were there and probably a little bit distracted, just remind us how we went through three problems, three different scenarios, and we helped everyone. So we had Juno with the farm coop. We did what? We worked backwards right. to arrive. And then you had Joe with the peanut butter supermarket. We, lo we did logical reasoning. Excellent. And Rohan and his wife? Um, we did um, making a table. There you go. So, so far, we gave them three, three strategies, different strategies they problem can Problem solving strategies. So, you know, we, okay. we, we're good to go, man. It's oh Lord, another problem. Today is just the day full of oh, yeah, problems. Oh, no, it looks so bad, though, because it was two lines. All right. Let's see. The difference between two numbers is 85. Mm. The smaller is 237. What is the larger number? All so right. we're given three options. A, okay. 152. B, 312. C, 322. All right. So just before we even touch this, um, there are problems. Several problems may exist, 
but some problems may be easier for, depending on your age and experience, to look at and solve. But let's say we gave this to a 10-year-old. It probably be a little, a little difficult for them to, and maybe not, you know, you never know, because it depends on their experience again. Yes. But let's look. There are some words that I think I'd have to understand in order to get to it. For instance, the difference. Great. Difference. What is the, what am, what am I talking about? Um, difference. I'm different. You're different. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what you're going with? Yeah. Math difference. Math. Oh, oh, oh. Math. All right, so when you're talking about difference in, in math, math now, and we're looking at the operation, we're looking at, you know, subtraction. Oh, thank you. You different, I different. Yeah. Duh. So different. All right. <laughs> so difference in math, we're talking about subtraction. Right, right. that's the operation. So the smaller is? The smaller number here? Yeah, the smaller 237. is 237. So that means A cannot be an option. All right. A because can be an option. 152 is not smaller than 237. I realize that you're using, you understand the problem, you know, and you're using what you know, and you're guessing, but continue. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, man. So what is the larger number? So clearly, them just give me two options for things. So <clears throat> since 322 is larger, make us try that. 322 is larger? Yeah. So you're guessing. Of course. So how you gonna check if you're right? So you guess how you're going to check? Because I I want to guess and I want to say B three hundred twelve. You are saying it's C three hundred twenty two. How can we figure I'm out? I'm going to subtract two hundred thirty seven from the three hundred twenty two. So not that you should say a long time. Well, how, else we, how else was I going to get eighty five? That's why I need to know. Oh. So, so but why? But if a child then wants to subtract, still guessing, but wants to check. If they're right, so you guess and you say C. You circle C. I okay. guess and say B. I circle B. But me that check it first. You're, no. you're checking check it. it. Me that guess and check it. So let's check it. Okay. So we wouldn't get, we definitely. Well, I didn't. Don't say 152. Can't work. Right. So the 152, I would not out have guessed. of it. I would not have guessed that. Whoops. He's out of yeah, here. That's right. All right. Let's look at the 300. Oh, Lord, so my answer wrong. So the 312 can't work. Well, I did just go with a bigger number because it's a, it had a bigger number. Oh, well, all right, fine. You get it, you get it. So our answer is definitely 322. Right. And it's obvious what we had used to guess. figure out this one. Guess and, and then check. you just checked it. Yep, and we guess. And we definitely checked it. So that's another method. And you know, this method, they can use it too with when they're doing the multiple choice. Most definitely. Yeah, man, they can use it when they're doing multiple choice questions. Yes. But let's We'd formalize. like you not to always use guess and check, though. Which is but true. When you're stuck or you, you have a little clue, you know, you give out, you, you have a idea of what the answer might be and you're down to like two you may want to guess and check but let's not guess and check all four all. options no. no not at all not <laughs> not going to work no. so we're formalizing the guess and check method no and it involves selecting likely solutions which we did with the conditions in our problem and exactly. we checked to see if these solutions are correct and we did all of that and this approach can save time if the options to a solution are Few. There you go. You realize that keyword? And, Few. and if we were guessing and checking, really, we did all three options, but we would not have chosen 152 because they did state, the problem this did state that 237 was the, the smaller, smaller value. Great. So to save on time, you would not have chosen the 152 because it is not smaller. It is not larger than the 237. 237, yes. right. And you realize too that you have understood the problem that Most we definitely. had. So that is very important. You have the to understand. understanding part, we have to definitely understand before oh, we yes. can do anything else. So let's take a look here now at the problem. So can mm. equal squaring numbers ending in five? And so far he has the following results. Mm. So we realize row so one five, number. 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, and we end at 95. All right, and we realize number when squared. So 25, 5, 5 is 25, 15, 15, 2, 25, 25, 25, 6, 25, 35 times 35 gives us 1,225. All right. 
Okay, I, I can't help you with no more. I, I, I get what you mean because you're reading what? You it's no row, you know. You're, you're exactly telling us. So that's fine. Look how guess smart what? I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm happy that you're reading it with understanding. So let's look at A. Explain what you notice about the result of each number square. I don't want you to tell me that when you multiply or you, you multiply the number by itself, you get that answer below. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Look again, man, and tell me what you notice. And hold on, before mm. you do that, I'm giving you two more okay. for you to think about. So the next one is you're going to describe a relationship between the number being squared mm -hmm. or your face changed oh. so, and the digits highlighted in red in wow. each result. The number nice. being you're squared. <laughs> so you're talking about the 15 and the 2. The number being squared. Right, which is a 15, mm -hmm. the 25, the all two. of those numbers being squared, right? And the digits highlighted in red. Great. No problem, man. And this one, no. And I want you to, after you figure it, I wish the viewers were able to see your face to wonder what's happening. Oh, no. 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 When you figure out A and B, let You're going to a. use it to complete the table. Let, let me figure out. B must figure out. So. Okay. <laughs> Explain what you notice about the results of each squared number. All right. So this easy, you know? It's easy, man, but I'll, I'll leave in you. I'll leave in you. Try to figure well, it out. Explain what you notice about the results of each squared number. All right. We're giving you time. Hurry up, no? Okay, they all have two and five. All right. They all, or they all have a five. They all, but they all have two and a five. So they're all the ending. End, they all have two, five, 25, two, mm -hmm. five. All right. Yeah. Good. So you're, they all so you're picking wow. up something happening. All so right. the next one going to have two, five at the end. Too. All right. So all of the others. Two, five. How, 25. How you're definitely sure that they will have I'm, 25. They'll have a two and they'll have a five, 25. I don't know. What do you mean? You don't know, but oh, you're no, able to tell us. They all have five. In it, all the numbers have five. So clearly, we're squaring the five. Great. So oh you're what, what you what, so what you're picking up then? Nothing else. You not pick up no, anything? No, all right. Not a problem. No, I want you to use. You're going to look. This relationship you're talking about. Yeah, man. You need to tell me the relationship. I need to hurry up and tell me the relationship too, because I give you too much time. Come on, figure it out. Figure it out. Come on, I'm no, sure I'm the grade see. 10 student at home. I don't now. see no Figure relationship. You have one and five up there. You have 15. And then you have two. All right, so watch this now. So you would have said the last two digits when you're looking at each number. Yes. Would have ended in two and five. Uh -huh. 25 right here, right? Right, right. But now you're looking at the two uh -huh. right here. But then when you're looking at the number up top, Mm -hmm. to be squared and the number following. What you realize about the digit in the tens column? Look and tell me. So, so I'm helping you, I'm giving okay. you a hint. So you have one. Oh, ignore oh, ignore okay. this one, so man. We're just looking one. at uh -huh. Then you have two. All right, and then look at the have... relationship. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So just look at the 15, the 25, mm -hmm. and look at the 225. So you would have already told me how you arrive at the, the 25, 25 right. right there. But I highlighted two. So I want you to look at what one. is in the tens column, great in 15 and 25, and tell me how you can get two. One times, one times two is two. All right, but watch it again. Do it now for 25 and 35 and tell me if it works. Three times two is six. All right. And that's a third number there. All right. So that must be three times four is 12. Great. So five times four is, five times four is 20. Good, but hold on, and hold on. Hold on, man, so you're getting it. But what you realize is happening with those numbers too. So you would have had one, the, the numbers. It's increasing by one. Great, good okay. job. Okay. So you realize that it's increasing. So you have 15, wow. so you have 10, then you have 20. Pretty much, I'm just looking at the tens place. Yes. So you have one, two, three, four, five, yes. six, seven. Great. Oh, skip okay. Yeah, man, we, and that is why I needed oh. you to complete the table. Oh. So based on the relationship mm. and the observations okay. that you would have. I can get this. All right. So this is three times four is 12. So this is the three, mm -hmm. four, mm -hmm. four. Oh, so it's four fours. Four fours, where you get four fours? Four. It's three. Yes, man. So this is one times two 
Two one times, times so one times two mm -hmm. give you two good Look. right okay two, two times, times three gives me six right three times four gives me 12. so how would you arrive right uh -huh. here now instead of you mm -hmm. running ahead if you don't have a calculator and you, you have to work this work question out without a calculator mm -hmm. figure it out all right so you go two times i'll give you that, that and that so three times four is 12 says so five times Four times five gives me 20. Great. And what would be your last? Remember, you 25. have 25. Great. So, you so it's 2,025. Good girl. What would be the next one? What if I work here? Give me. So 2,025. So when Six 45 times is squared. five uh -huh. is 30. Right. And then you add the 25. So it's 3,025. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me show you're going to do the next one now. Problem is there, but guess what? Yeah, try to trick me, you know. I guess see. what? So six would sixty-five would not be before ninety-five. Well, on, man. Eighty-five would be before it. I give in your head a little break. Yeah, man, work it out yourself. I give in your head a little break. Ah, oh, jeez. All right, our second break is upon us. We'll be back to wrap things up after this. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's pick up where we left off. So here we were at Kenny squared numbers ending in five, and so far he has the following results. Now Tamika was trying to figure out, so she trying would have completely. <laughs> she would have figured mm. out 45 when squared. But guess what? In the event, as I was reminding her and reminding our viewers before we left and we took the break, in the event we don't have a calculator. Okay. And we are squaring number. We need to figure out this table. So you worked out 45, you worked out 55. I did when 65 squared. too. All right, you did 65 yes. as well. What did you get for 65 when oh. squared? Looking oh. at what you have here. Never do it. So tell me now, man, <laughs> tell me now. Oh, so the next one would be 75. So it would be 7 multiplied by how do you know that it would be 75? I don't have 75 in my table. I want the answer for 65 well, and I need the answer for 95. Paying attention to the table, you would have added 5 to get 15. I mean, 10. Okay, 10. 10, 10 to get 15, 10 to get 25. And you keep on adding 10. All but right. you're trying to trick me and skip out some. Right, so the next one, if I added 10 to 65, I would get 75. Great, so we have some right. numbers missing from... And I have from... to make sure I'm paying attention to continue what I did before. All mm -hmm. right, so we know that that answer for 65 would then... Would be 7 multiplied by 6, so I'm multiplying the digits in the tens place. All right. So 7 times 6 is 42, and then I put on the 25. All so right. 4,225. You're not tricking me. All right. We're going to see. The next one is 95. So figure it out. Let's see if you get it. So what would what is, what would you do? Hmm. You see, I can't trick you. I, All right. That <clears throat> is a pity they can't see your face, you know. Well, <laughs> the next one, if I added 10 to 95, that would be 105. OK, you're paying attention. 105. So we would have had 85 missing. 95 missing and, and then, we would have had our 105. Right. So I, I definitely need the number that comes after to work mm. out the previous mm. options. Oh, great. great. Okay. All right. Great. So it would be 10 multiplied by 9. All right. Which is 90. 90. Yeah. You're sure? Right. Yes. You're sure yes. it's 90? Yes. 90. It's 90. I'm sure. You're sure it's 90. So the it's answer is just 90. 90. 90 and then I add on a 25. So it's... 9,025. All right. I got this. Yeah, you got this. Number. So let's check if you are indeed correct. 
So you would have answered A when we examine the results so far. We see that the last two digits are always two and five, 25. Yes. And remember, we were squaring the numbers and we were looking at numbers ending in five, right? right? Would have also looked, when we looked at the table for each of the numbers being squared, the first digit is multiplied by that, that is one more. So when you, you right. would have multiplied one times two, two. you would have looked at your tens column there, yes. But it would have still been one more because when you realize that, hey, you have 65 and I jumped to 95, Can't work you realize what took place. But you didn't tell me what you used to figure this one out. So after a while, it took you a while to understand the problem, you know. Oh, I, of course it did. I hope you understand and, the and problem. it's fine. No? It's fine. I understood in the end. You understand? Great. So in understanding, what did you do to understand it now? I looked for the pattern because you were trying to trick me. No, I wasn't trying to trick you. I no. looked for the pattern. There was a pattern. There was a pattern and I saw it. All right, you saw it. You looked at the observations that Look were there. taking place and you would have looked at the relationship. So this would have been your solution. So you are indeed correct. I and got you it. would have helped um, Kenny to square the numbers ending in five. So good job. You get it. So we are hoping that our viewers at home have gotten it as well. Yes, let me see. All of them end with two five. Yep. I I, I See? It. So we're proving it now. So all of them <coughs> ending with our two, two five, five, our right. 25, we're realizing. Mm -hmm. And in getting the first digit here now, so it's one times two, 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 two times, times three, three, six, three, three times, three, three times, times five, four, four or oh, 12. So three times four is 12. But watch me, you know, six times nine. Uh -huh. Six times seven. Okay. Right. Okay. So those two so. numbers there, the 75, 85 would have been missing as well as our 100. So keep, keep, keep on to note, pay attention to the progression, even when you do identify a pattern. If there are missing values, you can get one that's not correct. All right, All so right. we did look at a pattern, and it's another strategy that you can use to solve problems. The goal is to look for items or numbers that are repeated, um, or a series of events that repeat. And guess what? We need them to try this one at home. So Most we're just definitely. reading it for them, and we <clears throat> want them to try it at home, to screenshot it now, and try it at home. So Dumoy rode his bicycle to the park and he saw a number of other persons there. Some were riding bicycles and some were riding tricycles. In total, he saw 51 wheels. One, how many bicycles and how many tricycles were in the park? Two, what possible combinations of bicycles and tricycles were in the park? Mm -hmm. And three, explain why the number of bicycles in the park could not be equal to the number of tricycles. So it's important here for Dumoy to know that 51 wheels, and what we know about a bicycle? Two wheels. Great, what we know about a tricycle? Usually three wheels. Usually three, three, wheels. three wheels, good. So three wheels for a tricycle, and, and two, two wheels, wheels for a bicycle. bicycle. So those are important and information. And you have to account for both tricycle and bicycle. Great. So okay. he needs to figure this out. And we're hoping that you would have screenshot this for you to try at home. Yes. All right? No, we would have looked at some strategies <clears throat> so far. So we're just recapping our strategies here. Guess and check was one of them we looked at. We didn't get a chance to look at act it out, but that's another problem solving strategy. We looked at make a table, list or chart, look for a pattern, use logical reasoning, and we and work, work backwards. backwards. So these are problem solving strategies. And problem solving abilities. abilities are connected to a number of other skills, including analytical, analytical skills, innovative and creative thinking, adaptability, and flexibility initiative, a lateral mindset, and resilience. All right, and this is just our summary. There is never one recipe for solving a problem. You can get better and better to solve problems, both by building up your background knowledge and by simply practicing. As you solve more problems and learn how other people solve them, you learn strategies and techniques that can be useful. And guess what? No single strategy works every time. Exactly. And you can struggle a little. It's okay. And that's it for today's lesson. Remember, the only way to learn math is to do math. So you can tune in to JNN at 5 p.m. for the rebroadcast in case you miss anything or need to reinforce a few things. There's also the option of assessing this or 
any other lesson via the on-demand feature on One Spot Media. Tune in tomorrow for more class time. Until then, be good, be safe. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.